Good afternoon, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Friday, September 29th, 12.49 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. Doing an update, Grand Solar Minimum update on the volcano, Mount Agung. You're looking at it. We can come in. 134,000 flee. That's how many evacuated in about a seven-mile radius. I'll leave links to all this. The most recent update, satellite images overnight revealed a new crack in the crater. The images revealed a new crack in the crater of Bali's Mount Agung, and a pillar of white steam is now emitting continuously from the volcano. If you're still in this area, you should evacuate. This volcano is going to erupt. There's a Wikipedia here on Mount Agung. You can read about it. It's a stratovolcano, one of the most dangerous and picturesque type of volcanoes in the world. The lava is andesite, which is a silica-rich, explosive lava, forming these beautiful stratovolcanoes, similar to Mount St. Helens. Let me show you about the geology. It's located down here um, in Indonesia on the island of Bali. Notice that there are two different lines happening here. There's one that's purple and one that's red. This is the Great Sumatra Fault, and this is a plate boundary here, which is also a fault, but a subduction zone. This is also referred to as the Java Trench. It's very deep here, like the Marianas Trench. Where you have the Indian Plate, the Indian Ocean Plate here, being pushing underneath, go to the map, of the Eurasian Plate, right here. The Indo-Australian Plate pushing under the Eurasian Plate and inside of the Eurasian Plate forming a major rift called the Sumatra Fault Zone. You'll get links to all these maps Here's the Great Sumatra Fault. It's a very dangerous fault zone, similar to Mount, uh, the San Andreas. Huge amounts of strike slip, and right here you see that, and this fault kills thousands of people all the time. Guys, if you don't know, VolcanoDiscovery.com is a great resource where you can find a list of all the current erupting volcanoes. You'll get a list of that, a uh, link to that. And if you go and look at Agong, Minor activity or eruption warnings currently, and look at the stats down here. We're going to be talking about how these eruptions currently happening and big earthquakes are all connected to space weather and the grand solar minimum. If you look down here in 1808, Agung erupted. That was during the Dalton minimum. That's the. It's no surprise that the Dalton minimum is also the year without a summer in 1816 and the eruption of Mount Tambora as well as the gigantic earthquakes on the New Madrid strike-slip fault zone in the winter of 1811 and uh, 1812. Direct correlation between high cosmic ray flux, grand solar minimums, uh, large volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes. We're, we're looking right at the connections, and I'll be documenting these connections as the grand solar minimum progresses. Now, the last time a gung erupted here, it's interesting if you look at the data, the massive eruption we have data on is the large Plinian eruption in 63-64. A Plinian eruption is a Vesuvian eruption, which is a very violent eruption, mimicking that type of Mount Vesuvius and Pompeii that killed all the people back then, uh, near zero AD. Uh, Plinian eruptions are very deadly. And if you go look at the data at 63-64, as far as the cosmic connection in 1963 we were coming out of solar cycle 19 into this tiny minimum here look at the difference between these cycles and the major eruption happened right here at the bottom of the cusp of solar cycle 19 and it also erupted in 1808 during the dalton minimum at the bottom of a minimum solar cycle are you seeing a pattern it's now erupting at the bottom as here as we're going into the modern minimum the eddy minimum here the next grand solar minimum. But we'll get to more of that. Here's solar cycle 19. I'm going to list you links to this because uh, I'm not making it up. The end was October of 64, and the bottom of the cusp started in 63. Uh, this volcano erupted in 63 and 64, Agung. Notice, during the bottom of solar cycle 19, you will have links to all this so you can verify the facts. Just like I'm showing you folks. Now, this is called an anti-correlation, what I'm talking about right now, of silica-rich magma eruptions and solar magnetic activity. 
And it is found that 8 out of 11 eruptions took place in the period when the sun is not active, solar minimum, especially uh, inactive in grand minimums. This anti-correlation suggests that silica-rich, violent magma eruptions are triggered by bubble nucleation in magma induced by cosmic ray muons. I'll link you to that article. I'll also link you to the history of the science on the connection between volcanic eruptions and solar activity, starting with NASA in 1989. This paper coming out of Harvard, the possible correlation between solar and volcanic activity in a long-term scale, Czech Republic there. Explosive volcanic eruptions triggered by cosmic rays. Volcano is a bubble chamber. We just talked about the anti-correlation earlier. You'll have links to all this. And here at Ice Age Now, do volcanic eruptions coincide with low sunspot activity? Absolutely, they do. And we're going to look um, at this graph in great detail. And I'm not here to alarm you, but I want to quickly draw you to this map. Notice the black... Triangles are active volcanoes, and the dots are earthquake origins. This is basically showing all the evidence on why the plate tectonic model and theory is still being used today, because there is a lot of evidence that it's probably slightly correct, or something like that is happening. There's definitely these large lithospheric structures that kind of float around and slide by each other based on density differences. But this is the ring of fire we're looking at, and folks, these volcanoes here are not active. But they have been during solar minimums. All of them have been active during low sunspot activity, high cosmic ray flux. And we have the historical data to prove that. I just showed you the 1808 correlation here, down here on Monagoon. Now let me show you the unfortunate correlation with the Cascadia region. Folks, if you live in Washington State, Oregon, or Northern California, you better uh, start looking for a new place to live if you're anywhere near these uh, mountains because during the last grand minimum or even the Dalton minimum back here, Mount Baker erupted, Glacier Peak erupted, Mount Rainier erupted, Mount St. Helens erupted, Mount Hood erupted, Mount Shasta erupted, Lassen Peak erupted. And during the last thousand year peak, and I'm gonna suggest that we're exiting a thousand year peak, also, Glacier Peak, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Medicine Lake Volcano, Mount Shasta, and Lassen Peak again. So those volcanoes are going to erupt, and they're going to erupt in the very near future. And these are Plinian volcanoes, folks. They're stratovolcanoes, silica-rich magma, extremely violent and deadly. This volcano that's about to erupt is going to create pyroclastic flows, which if anyone is within a few miles of this mountain, will, they will burn. These pyroclastic flows can move up to 900 miles an hour, thousands of degrees of superheated dust. It's very deadly. And this entire portion of the coast in a very short period of time is gonna become very deadly. Look at that, amazing. So here's the correlation. If you just watched the Peter Temple video I posted earlier, I, uh, Dr. Wheeler in the turn of the century pointed out these thousand year major climate cycles that we're, that we're peaking in and now we're gonna be coming out of. And at, as you come out of these thousand year cycles, this is the result, volcanic activity at a very high level, as well as large earthquakes. This, is about, this video is about earthquakes, I mean volcanoes, but we'll cover earthquakes in a different video. And even in these small scale grand minimums, in the scale of two to 400 years, also volcanic activity. I'm gonna leave you links to all this, folks. If you live in this portion of North America or anywhere in the Ring of Fire and you have the ability to get out now, I would say move, move inland, move away from fault zones and especially stratovolcanoes because the past is the key to the future. The New Madrid fault zone also, the last time that moved was during the Dalton minimum, which is the last time that this volcano erupted also also during the Dalton Minimum and Mount Tambora. You do the math. Solar Cycle 19 at the bottom. I'll leave you links to all this. Guys, if you like the information you saw, 
Please subscribe to our channel and share this video with like-minded individuals. We're not here to scare you, just to give you the truth. Be safe.